afraid the judge decided against it. What have you been doing? Busy day? Hmm. Spent the morning in the reading room, British Museum. You know, textual criticism, Shakespeare. Bacon. What did you say? Bacon. Bacon, my foot. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Johnson said that if Bacon didn't write Shakespeare, he missed a great opportunity. I don't care a hang what Dr. Johnson said. My dear chap, could Bacon have written, Be not a fear, the aisle is full of noises. Sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a thousand twangling instruments will hum about my ears and... Ack, ack, over the estuary. King three. Ack, ack, over the estuary. All right, Cinder. Raid coming in from the southeast. Hmm. Better than usual. Huh? Somebody's signaling. Huh. Better give him a plot. Direction 4-1 on sound circle. Somebody signaling. Direction 4-1 on sound circle. Cockspur and Lower Regent Street, right. Inspector Scott? Yes? Observer call centre report signalling top floor office building, Cockspur and Lower Regent Street locality. Cockspur and Lower Regent Street? Yes. We'll get busy. Something here. Dead as mutton. Looks like a suicide job. Oscar Burrell. off into the usual odd note. This is the tale of Queenie Feather, who fire watched in all sorts of weather. But being rather scared of bombs, she made herself some tin-lined golf. <laughs> Sorry thing. So went on duty unafraid, tin hat, tin comms, bucket and spade. One night on hearing the alert, she filled her bucket up with dirt, then scudded up the attic stairs to stand among the falling players. Well, just as she was feeling tired, an anti-aircraft gun was fired. There you go. And as the shell went whizzing past, the tin guns couldn't stand the blast. 
and so forth, Queenie tried to duck it. She fell head first in her chair. She back it! Aren't they common? So holding her courage in her hand, <laughs> she stood like an ostrich in the sand. The shell which bent our Queenie double landed a jerry plane in trouble. And the pilot shouting, here I come, landed on poor Queenie's back. <laughs> Thin comms acted like a skewer, and Hitler's Air Force was one fewer. Now, sorry, now, like a soldier of the line, our Queenie is a heroine. The George Medal awarded the mayor to give it, and for the comms, a golden rivet. <laughs> I'd almost give you up. Would you rather I went straight home? Of course not, Sally, but you know how difficult it is to keep a table. I say, look who's blown in. Sally from Unterden Linden. <laughs> but she has the nerve to call herself here. Not so loud, my dear. Why not? I thought you promised the matrons to have her shipped up to Canada. She's going. When? My dear, that's one question you do not ask. Well, I can never understand why the government allows her to leave the country. What else could they do? Put her into Brixton jail with all the other 18 bees. Ladies and gentlemen, you've all heard what a sight to creep it off today. Well, I'll now give you the latest version, which I've dedicated to a young lady whose name, for the moment, escapes me. <laughs> creep it off today. Creep it off today. Three bit of her fura, love she be. <laughs> she went to see old Hitler down the famous Wilhelm Strass. He rose to greet her, then sat down, then jumped up like a fast. <laughs> Cause he'd sat down on his iron cross, which struck chilly, being brass. <laughs> now she's three bit of her darling love of him. <laughs> Was her journey really necessary? <laughs> Sally, do you think you're wise in staying? I came for a very good reason. No intention of being driven out by a few cheap jives that apparently amuse half-wits. Well, I think it has a very good reason. Not the half -wit. Let's dance. We'll not ditch them and we'll have a real birthday party. <laughs> you are a fool, Jimmy. It's not your birthday. It won't matter one little bit. Come on. All right. The day. Excuse me, sir. Colonel Hargrave wishes to have a word with you. Colonel Hargrave? Yes. He's at that table on the floor. All oh, right, George. Will you have the waiter send up another bottle? With pleasure. We'll be back in a flash with a flash. <laughs> Here we come. Hello, Colonel. Hello, Colonel. Hello, Congratulations, Jimmy. I suppose we mustn't ask what it's for. You wanted to see me, girl? Yes. Excuse me, madam. I've been searching for you all day. Sorry, girl. I've been doing a bit of celebrating. I'm sorry to spoil your fun. I've got another job for you. Very important. You're leaving for Canada tomorrow night. Tomorrow night? I'm afraid so. I should have stopped her from coming in, but her friend had already booked the table. And he's a very good client. Oh, that's quite all right, George. It wasn't your fault. Thank you very much. Father and Edward. Her mother slaving in the Red Cross. Her brother and her sister in the Navy. And here is she. Don't believe it. There's something fishy about it. She's just an exhibitionist trying to draw attention to herself. Do you want to go down to the shelter? Do you? No. That's all right, then. I'm quite happy where I am. The Dermans have the slightest inkling what you're doing, least of all the girl herself. I understand. You must keep her under the closest observation. It's a job that requires initiative and courage. Anything may happen at any moment. And you're the fellow for the job. Thank you, Colonel. There she is. Take a good look at her. I've already had a good look at her. So has everybody else. 
What time did I arrive here? It's pretty late. I wonder what has happened to you. I had an appointment. It kept me later than I'd expected. Oscar Burrell. Couldn't be suicide if he was signaling. Let me see. Report reached the yard at 9.4. You were at the location uh, of... 9.9. Nine. Rigor mortis had set in. There must be someone else in this. Well, there. Yeah. Right. Report just in, sir. They hit Buckingham Palace. With their majesties? No, they're in the country. With the princesses? Yes, sir. Thank God for that. Bad news? The news is all bad. Mm. We'll be for months till it gets better. No. Well, it's another bit about Sally. Makes my blood boil dragging our name through the mud like this. No, no, leave it there. What a mistake. A great mistake ever letting her go to Germany. My fault. London in the vergangene Nacht von der Luftwaffe angegriffen. Großfeuer wurden verursacht. Die Bevölkerung von London ist vollkommen terrorisiert. Niemand wagt es, die Luftschutzkeller zu verlassen. Herr Sir William and her ladyship are at breakfast, Miss Sally. Thank you. Nächten von der Luftwaffe angegriffen. Ein wichtiges Gebäude in London erhielt einen Volltreffer. Sometimes I think it was my fault, whether having produced her. Wait, you must count me in on that, too. Betty. Hello, Mother. Darling. Oh. Hello, Dad. How are you? All the better for seeing you, my dear. How long have you got? 48. Where have you sprung from? Oh, the other end of nowhere. Travelling all night and nothing to eat since oh. this time last week. Oh, you must be starving. Have a cup of coffee. Yes, I'd love one. Miss Betty. Hello, Reynolds. How are you? In exceptional health, thank you, Miss Betty. Quite exceptional. What have you got there? Scrambled eggs. Uh, dehydrated, I'm afraid, Miss Betty. Well, they look all right. Oh, they have quite a resemblance to um, <laughs> scrambled eggs. May I help you? Thank you, Reynolds. Oh, it's grand to be home. One second or two. One, please. Betty. What are you doing here? 48 hours leave. Do you mind? Morning, Mother. Morning, my dear. Morning, Dad. Eh? Oh, uh, morning. Those eggs real? They're quite real, Miss Sally, but uh, not the old-fashioned sort. Oh, well, toast and butter for me. Uh, margarine, Miss Sally. There you are, Miss Thank Betty. You. Plenty of butter and eggs in Canada. Won't that be nice? Betty, dear. Sorry, Mother. But this is something of an occasion. Sally's last breakfast before her departure to the land of plenty. Mm. And safety. Won't you be glad, all of you? Uh, the post, my lady. Oh. <clears throat> Thank you. Oh, hey, that girl. It's from Jack. He's mm. all right. What did you say? Wait a minute, dear. Wait a minute. <gasps> Listen, everyone. He says, unless you're very careful, you will have a DSO in the family. A DSO? <laughs> Bye. Yeah, that's fine. That's splendid. That's, oh. that's pretty good. You don't seem very excited about your brother's decoration. I've just got one of my own. A canary is a yellow bird. <laughs> or humor. Exhibit A. I must say, you've earned it. Well, I've got it. I can't bear it. We used to be such a happy, united family. But we're not now, and what's the use of pretending we are? Family or no family, I think Sally's behaving disgracefully, and I don't mind saying so. May I have some coffee? Yes, oh, you have another cup. Do you think it's fun in the mess to be the sister of the notorious Sally Maitland? Oh, so that's it. I'm spoiling the fun of your little game of tin sailors. That's a rotten thing to say. Men and women in uniform and out of uniform, fighting the foulest thing that's happened in the world, and you behave without a spark of decent feeling or patriotism in you. You seem to forget I've lived in Germany. Forget? You never let anyone forget. I know what's been happening there. And I suppose you know what they're fighting for. Girls, girls. What are you fighting for? Well, amongst other things, freedom. Freedom? Does your freedom include freedom of thought and speech and action? <laughs> Seems you're fighting that everyone else should think and behave as you think. Typical English hypocrisy. No, 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 I really can't help it. Palace farm. I suppose you'd like me to keep your parents informed after your whereabouts. After the scene this morning at breakfast, I don't think they'll be very interested. A final blow-up, eh? Blow-up to end all blow-ups. I'm very sorry, Sally. 
Don't you worry, Colonel, I'm not. 7.35 train for Liverpool will leave from platform 13, calling a crew Motley Hill. I suppose you'd be glad to get away. Shall be sorry. Well, I hope you'll find things a little pleasanter for you over there. I expect my reputation will have preceded I'm me. I'm afraid it has. Well, here we are. Thank you. Your trunk's in the van. Would you like an evening paper? Oh, no, thank you. Pardon me, does this train go to Liverpool? Yes. Thank you. Goodbye, Sally. Goodbye, Colonel. Take care of yourself. Lie still. They seem to be aiming at this train. They might quite easily hit it. But just because you're scared... Shut up. Don't be so brave. Any stewards about I'd rather a heavy bag down there. May I? If you would. Thank you. Sorry. I think I used to dangle her over the rail when she was a baby. Pity I didn't let her drop. It would save her father a few headaches and her mother a few heartaches. Captain Foster. You don't remember me. Oh, yes, I do. You're Sally Maitland. Yes, I suppose I have changed a bit. Yes, you have. Excuse me. I don't think you should be seen with me. I'm not very popular. Popularity is nothing. Most real men and women of the world are unpopular. Quite a pocket philosopher. If you feel like that about it, perhaps you'll bring those bags along. Pleasure. Seven two. Yellow Canary. SS Carina, Liverpool today. She's on board. 
It took them two hours to persuade me to make the journey on the same ship and then to find myself alone with her in the same cabin. Disgraceful. So I'm sleeping on a mattress on the floor. I'm sharing a cabin with two women from Ballon. Good Lord. Leave that, Peters, and take me three to 17. Very good, sir. By the way, if there should be any trouble, could you see that I'm in number three lifeboat? Okay, you're in seven now. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's all right, Commander. I'll pick that. Mister, please. Ah, yes, sir. Not now, thanks. Uh, your lifeboat station's number three, miss. You just follow the arrows in the passage round to your right. Thank you, Stuart. You know, you're lucky, miss. The party that was in here with you, a Miss uh, Chong Malondley, calls herself Chumley, she's moved out. <laughs> That's very lucky. Yeah, now she's sharing a mattress on the floor with two others. There's no accounting for taste, is there? <laughs> Captain Orlock, at your service. Oh, thank you, Captain. Say goodbye to your country? Not quite that. My country is saying goodbye to me. Oh, I'm sorry. How do you know I mind? Goodbyes are always difficult. The rarest thing in the world is a happy ending. Second time you've said something I shall remember. Twice. How nice of you to remember. I hope it will be a long voyage. <coughs> There's my escort. <coughs> Hello. I seem to have one of my own. Oh, we've met before. I don't think so. Yes, on the floor. Your head was on my shoulder. Hitler makes strange bedfellows. Not that it was much of a bed. What are you talking about? Nothing. I'm just talking to myself. Well, I hope you find it interesting. I do, very. What is your name? Never mind. But I do mind when I lie on the floor with someone. I like to know their names. I'm old-fashioned about that sort of thing. And it's not what I do with anyone, either. Excuse me, Mr. Garrett. Can I have a word on the bridge, sir? All right. Probably wants to warn you about talking to strangers. Oh, ask him my name. I will. I don't think he'll bother me again. I don't think he will. Shall we walk? Yes, all right. Morning, Captain. Morning, Commander. I understand you want to call Mr. Garrick. That's right. Any good reason? Very. A glass of sherry? Sherry, thank you. What takes you over the other side? Well... Sorry. Shouldn't have asked. Oh, I don't mind your knowing, Captain. It's a bit hush-hush. I, sh I shouldn't like it to go any further. It's, um, it's a sort of supply job, the Canadian Navy. You know, anything from tin hats to toothpicks. Doesn't seem to be much hush-hush about that. Well, I haven't told you the exact truth, but that's the sort of thing it is. I see what you mean. Who is that girl? You mean to say you don't know Sally Maitland? Sally Maitland? You surprise me. She's attractive, isn't she? I think so. Well, you're welcome to her, as far as I'm concerned. Thanks. I'll see what I can do about it. Cheerio. Mm. Find the ship, Herr Kapitän. Steuerbord voraus. SS Carina. English ship, SS Carina. Steuerbord voraus. Carina reported by U-boat 78, latitude 54.20 north, longitude 15.1 west. Sure, it's quite certain the Fräulein Mason is aboard. Quite certain. Full steam ahead north by northeast. Grossified for us. Course north to west. Tomorrow we lose our escort. We're on our own. In the event of an alarm, the ship's rattlers will be sounded. And you will assemble at your allotted boat station. All lifeboats must be worn or carried. Do not undress. Excuse me, lady. You've got yours on upside down. All port Have I? Must well, I don't suppose it makes any difference. No, not, not much. You've just flowed upside down. Of course, you'll keep your feet dry. You're pulling my legs. Huh? No light of any description. Please, sir. Yes, sir. Shown sir. After oh, that's all right. Light your cigarette can be seen for three quarters of a mile. An open porthole would endanger the safety of this ship. 
Any other ships in the vicinity? All electric razors must be handed to the purser. Why is that? They send out wavelengths. The u beds pick them up. Oh, yes, I see. Thank what you. What did you say? The used blades float on the waves and the u boats pick them up. Oh, I see. Mm. But electric razors don't have blades. Oh, not whoever told you that. I've, um, I spoke to the captain about you. Oh, what did he say? Well, not very much. You seem to have an exaggerated idea of yourself. You really said you didn't think much of the war. It's quite right. I don't. I agree with you. The hell of it. You've messed up a lot of things. If you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss the war. I couldn't agree with you more. What should we talk about? May I help you? No, thank you. Hello. Would you mind? Certainly. Thank you. Repeat, SS Carina reported. Latitude, 60, 15 north. Longitude, 20, 15 west. Lighted porthole observed by U-boat 93. Good. We should sight her within 24 hours. Is it necessary before blackouts? It's absolutely stifling in here. Sorry, Miss. Captain's orders. Somebody left the porthole open last night on this side. Oh, my dear, they are so refreshing. Especially Mrs. Burton. Delicious, caustic wit. Thank God I have a sense of humor myself. And, of course, the proverbial heart of gold. Yes, of course. Do you know, she asked me if I'd sleep in her bed, and she'd sleep on the mattress on the floor. Jolly good show. Uh, did you accept? Have you ever slept on a mattress on the floor? Quite. <laughs> oh, Mr. Garrick. Oh, please don't get up. <laughs> Watch this. One, two, three. Where is it? <laughs> well, children, that's the end of children's hour for today. See you tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Huh? Goodbye. Goodbye. It was the worst blitz Balam had had. After the bomb had burst, she said she was in her bed. But there was no bedroom. Well, there wasn't even a house as far as she could see. But she was quite calm. Look at that woman. And as Mrs. Burton would say, dolled up like a tart. I hope she's not a friend of yours, Mr. Garrick. Oh, good Lord, no. I've never set eyes on her before this trip. But you know all about her. Pro Nazi, fifth columnist, Rupert Top's girlfriend, etc. Not so loud, Major. But don't stop. Tell me, why are you making this dangerous journey to Canada? Don't you know? Well, I hear rumors, but I don't trust them. How does your poet say, rumor is a lying jail? Huh? I think someone should warn that very nice young Polish captain about her. He certainly hangs around. He's probably trying to reform her. Yes, they're so sentimental and sad, the Poles. True. Why are you going to Canada? To see my mother. She's an invalid. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you ever go to Warsaw? Did you hear that, Major? You were right. He's inviting her to Warsaw. Somehow I don't think she'll go, because I hear strictly between ourselves, that the real trouble between Hitler and Hess was... Dear, do you know the real trouble between Hitler and Hess was all because... Uh, that isn't news, buddy. Everybody on this ship knows that. Bill. It's true. I ought to know. Haven't I been doing it for nearly a week? Yes, that's why they nearly ducked her in the pond at Hyde Park. Don't you resent all these vile things people say about you? What's the use? Do you think any cause is worth it? Don't let's talk about that. Tell me. Tell me some more about Warsaw. What more else is it to tell? We lost it. Yes, we lost everything. Our cities, people, country, our children. Suddenly, literally out of the clouds, death, destruction, maybe. Blown to pieces, and not always to death. Hello! Carry on, Captain. Everything's going to be all right.
my trip so far. Yeah, they said it would be. The devil sure takes care of his own. Uh-oh, there she goes. Mummy, if the war goes on for years, shall we be Canadians? But the war can't go on for years, darling. Yes, but Mrs. Burton told me that her Harry told her that it sometimes takes three weeks to cross. Three weeks? Good Lord. I think I was bored on the Queen Mary when she won the Blue Ribbon. Yes, it all seems very fun. Drevsky was one of her admirers. Then friends joining in, singing folk songs, smoking, sipping Vishnovka. Must seem very far away. Does your mother still play? No, she will never play again. How sad. There's a ship to starboard, sir. Strange looking craft. Maybe a Norwegian, sir. It's a raider. And a big one. SS Carina on port side. Fire salvo across her bows. Signal the heave to. Schuss for Hamburg. Signal by drain. Sally, it would be so easy to fall in love with you. How do you know I'd mind? Change direction and speed it up. Give her one round. Mit Granaten geladen. Ein Schuss. Feuer! Hit her midships. Shall we give her another? No. Repeat signal. Heave to. Signal. Bei drehen. From the third officer, sir. Hit her midships. Number two hole flooding. We have no hope. Another shot and we'll be at the bottom. Signal we're heading to. All right, sir. She's heaving too. Good. Signal we're sending a boarding party. Signal, Friesen Mannschaft, come on board. You better go yourself. This is the second time I've had this happen to me. Last time they took out a couple of passengers. Maybe this time they'll take one back to where she belongs. I've got a feeling she jinxed this job. Better go and meet them and bring them here. Right. Any a cruiser wasting its time boarding a little tub like this? She could have sunk us in five minutes. It must mean something. I suppose it must. Swine. That's good. Murders of women and children. Wollen Sie gefälligst Ihren Mund halten? Ihr Nazis habt nur Courage, wenn ihr unbewaffnete Leute vor euch habt, die euch auf Gut und Gnade ausgeliefert seid, aber ihr habt kein Mitleid. Shut up! I will not shut up! I want everyone to hear and understand. You Nazis are only happy when you have arms in your hands and unarmed people in your power. Without arms you are nothing. You are just a poison. You can only destroy. Hans Maul! Aber euer Stern geht unter. Wollen Sie gefälligst Ihren Mund halten? Und wenn er wieder aufgeht... <lacht> Static peacocks. Your blood pressure, Major. It's already on the simmer. I must keep it off the boil or I'm liable to do something violent. Hi, Hitler. I'm the captain of the ship. What do you want? I want us to take off one of your passengers. I'm sorry I'm powerless to prevent you carrying out your orders. Send for Lieutenant Commander Garrick. We have a Mr. Garrick on our passengers. I said Lieutenant Commander Garrick. 
Ask Mr. Garrick to come on the bridge. What's happened? The captain would like to see you on the bridge. What's it mean? I'm afraid they're going to take you off. Are they? You are carrying essential metals for use in aircraft production. 72 passengers and a crew of 54. Are you asking me to confirm your information? If you are... Our information has already been confirmed from a most reliable source. A most reliable source, yes. I have women and children aboard. I should be glad if you can have time to take to the boats before you sink. Well, oh, that is a matter entirely for our captain. Mr. Garrick. Return, Commander Garrick. You are my prisoner. Get back on up here and... Is that all you want? You will signal to our ship that we are returning, and you will await further orders from our captain. Hi, Hitler. Now the boats. Prepare to abandon ship. It'd be nice to do something violent. Hi, Hitler. Do oh, what a soul. Please don't apologize. The pleasure is entirely mine. Jolly good show. What do you say? He just called me an old sow. Maitland has some important work ahead. So it seems. Perfectly natural mistake to make in the blackout. Do you know a pal of mine met a girl in Piccadilly? He thought Very the name was Sophie. Very clever, Mr. Pimpernel. Suppose you have something more important to do. Yes, right now, I must borrow a hat and coat. The Fuhrer does not approve of good friends of the Third Reich being watched. Except by the Gestapo. The Gestapo is going to have a pleasant surprise when I hand you over. Yes, very. What the devil does this mean? I was placed under order, sir. I had to carry them out. Message just received, sir. Proceed. Proceed? Yes, sir. Thank God for that. Here, cancel that last order. I'm going to my cabin. Tell Garrick I want to see him. Aye, sir. Sorry, Skipper, but the job I'm on requires my personal services. It's his first trip with me. It was about the finest second I've ever had. It was the finest second I've ever had. What do you say? I said it was the finest second I've ever had. Now he's got the chance he's been waiting for since the war started. You get it? I get it. Elementary, my dear Watson. Took most of the skin off my shin, but it was worth it. Oh, Mrs. Burton, how very thoughtful of you. <laughs> it isn't often I weaken, but after the excitement of tonight, I really need a tot. Bottoms up. Well, Charles, a lucky escape. Lucky? It's a bleeding miracle. Well, thank heavens, everything's all over now, bar the shouting. Yes, and the old man's gonna do plenty of shouting. Somebody left a porthole open after blackout, set the night out. Yes, I'm sorry. Very absent-minded of them. I'll say it was. I was torpedoed by the Prince Eugene last April. Lost everything. Mm, jolly bad luck. In the Navy, then. Been torpedoed five times. Good Lord. Ah, you get used to it. I don't know what some of my pals are say they can see me now. What a life. Everything from a father confessor to washing babies' nappies. Revolting. I endangered the whole ship. No, I was wrong. But Sally, I want you to understand this. When I saw those Nazis, I got crazy. If I could kill only one of them, it might ease the hate in me. Hate like, like a pain the whole time. Do you understand this? I have my way of looking at the war. You have yours. Oh, Jan, please leave it at that. Sally, when that woman war saw hit our house. My mother was nearly blind, but she will never walk again. I'm terribly sorry, but war has always meant suffering for the innocent of both sides. But this war is different, Sally. You're fighting Nazis. Nazis aren't human. 
They are out to destroy everything, everything that's good. They are... So, from the first moment I saw you, I wanted to persuade you to see that. I failed. But I know someone who would. Who's that? My mother. If only you would meet her. I would like to meet your mother. What do you know about that fellow, Orlock? Polish refugee, crossing to see his mother. She was hurt at Warsaw. I can't help sympathizing. <laughs> the chief tells me he left the Bosch habit. He certainly shot his head off. Why that raider didn't sink us is beyond me. I'd like to know that too. Good night. Good night, young. I can't leave you tonight without telling you how I feel about you. Oh, yeah. I don't care about your views. All I know is I love you. Come in. I thought you might sleep more soundly if you knew that the captain was just... Please go and jump in the ocean. What, tonight? At 20 below zero? Can't you see you're annoying, Miss Maitland? Well, since you mention it, I do feel that my motive hasn't been entirely appreciated. Good night. Good night. Shall I shut the door or leave it on the latch? Yeah, and I think you'd better go. But Sally... No, please. I... Sally. Please, you must go, Jan. Good night. going to live. I'm moving to Bellum. Halifax. Mighty important place, Halifax. Gateway to Europe. I imagine that comes under the category of careless talk. I suppose it was rather stupid saying that. Very particularly to me. Somehow, I never feel that way about you. You'd better. Does, um... Does Poland feel that way about you? Wouldn't you like to know, Flatfoot Garrick? Well, I would like to know what he finds to talk about all the time. I expect you would. Does he manage to keep off the wall? I don't propose discussing it with you. Another subject out. You certainly do make conversation rather difficult. I don't seem to. Will you be staying in Canada? Two months. How long will you be staying in Canada, Captain? Two weeks. Not very long. No. Well, I hope you have a pleasant. Stay. Thank you. Au revoir, Captain. Au revoir, Madame. What a hero. Yes, stout fellow. How long will you be staying in Canada, then? Three months. That's the period of my exit permit. Yes. No more luxury liners for me, my dear. Only way to travel is. <laughs> Even with the Prince Eugen and the U boat scare last night thrown in. If I can be of any service to you while you're in Halifax, don't hesitate to call on me. Thank you. How very kind. Not at all. Did you hear that, Major? Yes, yes, yes charming. Preserbian Canadian hospitality. A jolly good show. Who is it? Well, just a habit, Asher. Oh, Miss Sally Maitland. Yes. How long will you be staying in Canada? Indefinitely. Have you got a room reserved in Halifax? If you hadn't, I doubt whether you'll get one. The hotels are absolutely packed. I can fix it for you. I've got influence. Really, I can manage quite well by myself, thank you. It's queer cargo they're sending us these days. How long will you be staying in Canada? 
indefinitely. Weren't you rather unnecessarily rude to Miss Maple? This is a free country. We can think and say what we please. So I see. Thank you. You have a room for Miss Maitland? No, I can see no reservation in the name of Maitland. It was booked before I left England. There must be. Some. Sorry, we have a long waiting list and the guests are sleeping in the corridors. One moment, miss. I think you'd better call Mrs. Stander. Miss Stander? There's a Miss Maitland here who said she made reservations. Miss Sally Maitland? Yes. Yes. Her room is number 73. I will take care of her myself. Right. The reservations had been made. The stand will show you to your room. Could you fill in this form, please? Sally Maitland est arrivée. Je vais m'en occuper personnellement. Bien. Bien sûr. I have a room reserved. Joan Ward. Oh, yes. How long will you be staying, Miss Ward? Miss Sally Maitland? Yes. I'm sorry there was a mistake about your reservation. Uh, number 73. Have Miss Maitland's luggage taken off to her room, Frederick? I will take you. Thank you. You're very busy. Yes, we are very busy. Are these all occupied? Yes, they are all occupied. Oh, Marie, is number 73 ready for Miss Maitland? Quite ready, mademoiselle. Your room faces the sea, which makes a blackout necessary. You will be very careful about it. Yes, of course. It is the responsibility of the guest. The penalties are very severe. I understand. Would you like me to unpack your bag? Oh, thank you. No, I'll, I'll do them myself. Very well, madam. Oh, uh, Miss Maitland, do not judge Canadian hospitality by Miss Stander. Downstairs, we call her Sour Puss. <laughs> I don't wonder. At the Barrington. I'll let them know immediately. Advise the RCMP that Miss Sally Maitland is at the Barrington Hotel. Yes, sir. RCMP? Well, oh, we do our best, but it won't be very good. <laughs> Yes. Yes, all right. Goodbye. <coughs> what, did you tell them? They already knew, sir, and the room number is 73. Hmm. Can't tell the RCMP very much. Oh, you better ring them again and ask them to detail a couple of men to keep Miss Maitland under constant observation. Yes, sir. Glad to see you again. How about a drink? No, thank you. I don't want to be a nuisance, but... Oh, you're very considerate. It's the first kind word you've said. Free for dinner? No. It's too bad. I'll have to spend the rest of the evening in the bar. Well, that's too bad. Hello. Oh, in case you don't know it, there are no bars in Halifax. If you please. Yeah, that's her. What a heck of a reputation she's made for herself. Yeah. Sally, this is our good friend, Sir Maria Balska. Oh, how do you do? You're very welcome, Miss Maitland. Oh, where's Mother? She's resting. The excitement of seeing you again, the prospect of meeting Miss Maitland, is quite exhausting. <laughs> Would you prefer that I... Right. Oh, no. Madame Orlock receives very few visitors nowadays. She's looking forward with the keenest anticipation to meeting you. 
May I take your hat and coat? Oh, thank you. No, it's, madam is tired. I won't stay long. You're very thoughtful. Oh, what a, an unusual house. Yes, it is quite an atmosphere of Europe. Our own home, that was. You must have a lovely view here. Oh, yeah. There she goes. Blackout, Sally. I'm sorry. It isn't that I haven't been warned, but this beastly fog. How do they run things out here, sir? The Royal Canadian Mounted Police are responsible for security, and the grand job they're doing. They contact us, or the military, or the Air Force, in any matters that concern our respective services. They know everything and everybody. So I understand. Right. There you are. She's the Chateau Brochet. That's a Polish woman. What do you know about Madame Orlock? Put him well, le dossier uh, d'Orlock. Uh, she's quite a remarkable old lady. Relic of the past. Why are you so interested in her? Oh, nothing, really. I just don't want her to get into bad company. Her son came over with you. Yes, I know. I couldn't get him out of my hair. <laughs> yeah. Well, she's rented the Chateau for the duration. Polish refugee. Very well to do, good family, aristocratic. Papers are in order. Ah, there you are. Mother, this is Sally Maitland. Well, well, well. Come a bit closer, my dear. My eyes. Yes, Mother, I told her. Sit down, dear. Here. Me and me, will you? Oh, John. <laughs> this is an occasion. We have very few visitors nowadays. Bring some wine, John. Yes. A strong face and a fine couch. One who's not afraid to be alone against a crowd. To swim against the stream. You're very understanding, madam. Well, now that you are with us in Halifax, are you going to stay here? Oh, I expect so. I, I have no plans. Have you any friends here? Oh, I left my friend. <laughs> that is, I haven't any. I hope to make new friends. Well, you must come here whenever you care to. And now that we have met, you must not wait for Jan to bring you. Very kind of you. Sonny. Thank you. <coughs> Mother? You know, Jan has set me a task, or should I rather say a labor of love. So I believe. He has to a happier future for the world. To the new order. Sally, how could you say that? I'm sorry, Jan, but after all, you do Jan, know Jan, that's all right. I shall drink to the new freedom, or as I don't care much for new things, I drink to the old freedom restored and leave it to Jan and his friends to fight for theirs. For freedom is never a thing you can take for granted. So to the past. To the future. That leaves me with the present. After all, it's usually the most important. So she thinks I'm a halfway, and I had to behave like one most of the way over. Well, the last place you'd expect to find me would be in an intelligence department. Good. Keep it up. Pardon me, sir. Miss Maitland just left the chateau by taxi. Thank you. Can I get a lift, sir? I need to get back to the hotel right away. Oh, you better take my car. It's at the side entrance. Thank you, sir. Good night, sir. Good night. Let's have some coffee, Paul. Well, Had the fog cleared up at the chateau, Captain? Oh, yes. Not nearly, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Captain. Goodbye, Jan. Goodbye? I think it's better if we don't see each other again. But why? Oh, I wrecked a pleasant evening. I distressed your mother. Well, I'm sure my mother understands, as I understand. No, Jan, I don't think you do. Sally, we must meet again and talk but everything over. lead to the same. Sally, I will take no refusal. I call for you at 3 o'clock tomorrow. Huh? Good night. Good night. Good night. What are you doing? 
doing there? Well, I thought of getting a night's rest. And why outside my door? Last bed in the hotel. Last in Halifax, as a matter of fact. I thought you had influence. I have. That's how I got this. Good night. Happy dreams. A policeman's first duty is to his feet. Yours would get a better night's rest if you took your boots off. Hey, blue booties. Citadel Hill is my favorite spot. I get such a feeling of spaciousness here. I can see it all so clearly in my imagination. Halifax has a wonderful history too, Miss Mitchell. Yes, Jan told me all about it. He is a great reader. You know, Sally, your great Nelson used Halifax for refitting his fleet. And uh, in the American Civil War, it was a home port for the blockade runners. And in the last war, it was, as it is now, the gateway to the Battle of the Atlantic. Oh, my dear, you mustn't distress yourself by too much talking. Now, drink your milk. That's a real miracle of Halifax, is its resurrection after almost complete destruction. In 1917, a great ship loaded with steam and tea collided with another in the harbor. A drum of petrol overturned on deck and caught fire. There was a British cruiser nearby. A high flyer. Ah, you know the story. Oh, yes, I must have read it somewhere, possibly in the Reader's Digest. Didn't um, a group of sailors from the cruiser go aboard the TNT ship and try to put the fire out? That's right. And there was one of the greatest explosions the world has ever heard. Every ship in the harbor was wrecked. A huge tidal wave. Even the harbor front collapsed. Thousands of people were killed and injured. Must have been a devastating blow to the Allies. It was. Children, as if there weren't enough horrors today without recalling the past ones. Oh, my dear. I think it must be getting on for tea time. Yes, all right. You will be coming with us, Sally, won't you? If I may. Oh, of course. Now, come along, Jan. Tea. And it'll be better for you to do it while she's with them. I suppose they'll go straight back to Chateau from Citadel Hill. Practically certain. The old lady seldom stays out more than an hour or so. Do we pull any punches, sir? No, make it a frontal attack. Although you can make it clear that we're acting in a friendly spirit. That's all. Right, sir. More tea, Sally. Listening to music is one of my greatest delights. It even means more now than it did now that I cannot play myself anymore. Two men have called, madame. Two men? Who? Uh, I don't know, Jan. I've never seen them before. British? Yes. Uh, they wish to know if you're at home. Well, of course I'm at home. Show them in. Give me another cup, Jan. Madam Orlock, we're from headquarters, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. How can I help you? This is my son, Jan. How did you do? And, um, and Miss this Maitland, is my... yes, we know. Now, to come straight to the point, it's confirmed by Miss Maitland being here and dining with you last night and being at Citadel Hill with you this afternoon. The fact is, Madam Orlock, Miss Maitland is pro-Nazi and makes no attempt to hide it. On the contrary, back in England, she made herself quite conspicuous by her anti-British feeling and was thrown out. But this is purely an unofficial visit, a friendly one to warn you. Warn us? Yes. After all, you are guests in Canada, and we don't want you to put yourselves in an embarrassing position. It would be unwise of you to continue to entertain Miss Maitland during her stay in Halifax, as you're doing now. That's all we've come to say. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'm sorry. I'll go at once. I will not have you driven away from my home. I'm very grateful for your kindness, madam. And I'm extremely sorry to have caused you this unpleasantness. I'd rather go. Jan, go with her. Yeah. Goodbye. Well, as they talk about the Gestapo, those men bursting into your house like that, why, it's absolutely outrageous. I shall leave Halifax tomorrow morning. But, Sally, if you would only no. stay... No, no, Jan, I've quite made up my mind. Sally, I want you to stay here, and we will repay them with interest. What do you mean by that? I have many friends in Halifax. Jan, will you please stop talking in riddles? Sally, let's sit down.
I'm in your hands, Sonny. Rather the other way around, isn't it? I'm in yours. But your mother, does she know? I must beg you never to say a word to her about this. In her state of health, she couldn't bear the shock. You swear? Yes, of course. I knew I could trust you. You see, Sally, it was my mission to follow you from England and to keep close watch over you. You won the Führer's admiration. I myself heard him speak highly of you. And now you have the honor to serve him. What do you want me to do? Work of the utmost importance. We have a wonderful organization over here. You're the leader? No. Only a very few know who the leader is. But are there many of you? Enough. And none of us are suspect. Well? When do I start? Aber euer Stern geht unter. Und wenn er wieder aufgeht... I've heard that somewhere before. Very observant on the ship. Yes. I gave that message to our commander. It was too important to trust even our infallible channels with it. This star is waiting. When it rises again... Well, that's very soon. Almost immediately. Oh, Jan, you've given me the opportunity I've been waiting for to serve the cause I believe in. Cause for which I would die. True Nazi. Sally, this was given to me by the Fuhrer himself. Take it. It will draw from it the courage to carry out his great work. So I simply couldn't resist calling and meeting his mother. You would have been very proud if you could have seen the way he went for that Bosch. He called me an old sow, the swine. Captain, you must be surprised to see me here. I'm delighted. I've been hearing, John, of your terrifying experience. Why didn't you tell me? Oh, it's nothing to worry you with, Mother. <laughs> How characteristically modest, isn't he? <laughs> oh, and that reminds me, talking of modesty, the modesty of Mr. Garrick. What do you think? I haven't the faint study. Oh, of course you haven't, neither had I. Lieutenant Commander in the British Naval Intelligence. Mystery DSO for something very hush-hush. <laughs> It just shows you how careful you must be. Put your hands up. Turn round. I thought so. Well, here we are. I suppose you know who I am. British intelligence. With nothing better to do than follow me around. Correct in every detail. Well, now that you are here, watch that door for me. This is my pigeon, not yours. Okay, Chief. Am I livid about it? After all the preparations this took, can't they trust me? This is a pretty risky job. You're Colonel Hargrave's ace. I'm just told to stand by in case I'm needed, that's all. What do you think I am, a child? Well, it looks as though all this stuff has been planted for our benefit. That's pretty old-fashioned, not up to their usual standard. Somebody playing to the old lady. Can't be Yan, he's gone out. The only one coming, switch the light off. It's just beside you. Get behind these curtains. were expected. Quite a bonfire. Well, there's no point wasting our time here, but I must have a talk with you. Well, that's a change. We might even have a drink. Yes, we might. Well, then not leave together. You first. I'd like to see you safely off the premises. Uh-uh. They catch you. You've no excuse. I'm one of them now. 
Off you go, the way you came. Okay, this may be your pigeon, but you're my pigeon. Off you go, the way you came. All right, have it your own way. Thanks, I will. Wait for me at the corner of Barrington. I'll pick you up. Yes, I was beginning to think he never would give himself away. But having myself denounced at the Orlock home did the trick. He spilt the beans, <laughs> including a fancy swastika within an hour. Pretty smart work. Now I'm in it with them, up to my neck. And they've got something on. Very big and very soon. What makes you think that? Aber euer Stern geht unter. Und wenn er wieder aufgeht. Sorry, but I'm not too good at conundrums. When did you first get on to Jan? Why, when he shouted back in German. Perfect German. Without a trace of Polish. Pretty smart work. May I see your identification card and passport, please? Ihren Reisepass and Ausweiskarte. What is your authority? RCMP and Naval Intelligence. Good enough. Okay. But you might remember, German is not a very popular language around here. So I see. Pretty smart work. <laughs> I think we'd better beat it. Taking time by the oarlock, as you might say. Oh, that takes me straight off to bed. I'll come with you. I'll take your time. To your room. Well, good night. Why don't you ask them for a room and get a decent night's rest? I prefer that. Getting quite attached to it. I'm afraid I've been pretty rude to you. Yes, I've taken plenty of brushing off. You think I've enjoyed doing it? You seem to be having a heck of a good time. Did I? Yes, you did. I'm sorry, but after all, we we weren't exactly being ourselves, were we? Might be fun being ourselves. Yes, sir. I think it might. Well, here it goes. Hold on to your hat. Now, who's taking time by the Orlock? Orlock? Does that guy always have to butt in? <laughs> good night. Good night. Would you mind telling me what you mean by that joke? What joke? The joke on my name. Oh, that! <laughs> Shocking bad joke, wasn't it? Typically British. I was just throwing it back where it came from. So, from Mr. Garrick? Yes, doesn't it just fit him? You're very friendly with him. Yes. He's in the British Intelligence Service. Yes, I know. Yet you exchange bad jokes with him and confidences. Really, Jan, aren't you being a little difficult? I started my new job. Coming across, I, I was pretty offhand with him. It was a mistake. Tonight, we've made friends. <laughs> we've exchanged all sorts of confidences. Mr. Garrick's going to be very useful to us. Do you expect me to believe that? Why, of course. We can't work together unless we trust each other. Well, what's all this? Put on your head and coat. Walk out of this hotel. Ask the commissioner to call a taxi. I'll follow you. Any trick. And it will be too bad. I see. You've caught me. It's my own fault. I should have checked up on you. Go on. What else is there to say? You're in the British Secret Service and you've got me. Anything else? Yes. Yes, there is one thing. Don't let them take me back to England. Let them deal with it here. You rat. I really believed you when you said you loved me. Forgive me, darling. I do love you. But you see, I had to make sure. Tonight we strike. And you are to play a vital part. I'm taking you to meet the council and the leader. They're accepting you on my responsibility. I see. Don't ever do that again. You scared me. <laughs> now, there will be no need. If everything goes well tonight, I've decided we shall be married immediately. How nice. 
Yes. And now we must hurry. We are late already. We are due now. Now? Yes, now. Sally. Oh, what a mess I've made of your face. <laughs> Wait a minute. There. Get my coat, will you? Out of that cupboard over right. there. I'll fix my... There are several coats here. Which one, darling? Oh, the, uh, the fur one. Fur one. Oh. You know, Sandy, I really ought to object to that. The Fuhrer frowns upon such vanities. Oh, when, when I first met him in 1937, I had on this identical shade. He rather liked it. Oh. Well, that, of course, is different. Oh. Oh, yes, that English fool outside. He's asleep. Let not be seen going out of my room together. Oh, no. I would never do. I go first. I'll meet you at the top of the staircase. Make it the back staircase, right opposite. Right. Organization. Yes, on this occasion even we failed. When was that? The very night before we left England, we missed dealing a blow which the English could not have taken. How? The king and queen and the princesses were either at Buckingham Palace or in the country. The Luftwaffe was approaching. Our member was to signal the leading aircraft at which of the two places the royal family were. We had definite information of the way in the country and the precise spot. For some unknown reason, he sent up the wrong signal. Buckingham Palace was bombed, and the royal family escaped. What happened to your member? Oscar Borel, he was found dead, shot through the head. Suicide? Of course, what else could he have done? Of course, what else? And she threw that at me. He must have been in her room the whole time. How the deuce he got in there? Go HQ, wait. She so got her wits about her. She's terrific. Excuse me, sir. I must see you alone. It's urgent. That's all right. You can speak in front of Commander Garrick. Oh, uh, Garrick, this is Jack Cardwell, one of our most promising youngsters. Thank you, sir. Well, go ahead. I think I've got on to something, sir. Important. Good work. Sally Maitland. She's up to her tricks. Oh, um, uh, well, uh, well, as a matter of fact, we've just been discussing her. I think you can safely leave that young woman to us. We've got her ticked. But it's the Queen Mary, sir. A sabotage job. Oh. Oh, well, we'll get on to that. In the meanwhile, you lay off, Cardwell. Aye, aye, sir. Very good work. Thank you, sir. Don't any of your boys know about Sally? No. Only myself and the head of the Mounties. Well, that's the way they wanted it back in England. After all, they've taken a lot of trouble building her up, so we agreed. She's been accused of a lot of things, but sabotaging the Queen Mary... <laughs> yes, I think we can safely forget that. You look very surprised to find me in your own. Well, I was. I'm still wondering how you got there. Our organization is very efficient. <laughs> so it seems. And the Führer always watches over good friends of the Third Reich. Canary. Mm -hmm. You'll put it in my cabin. And send one to you in London. Just in case I should change my opinion of the British? Precisely. Well, well, well. Today has been full of surprises. And you will have a few more before the day is over, my dear. Arbeit geleistet. 
Der Führer ist zufrieden. Der Führer erwartet heute Abend von euch allen äußerst den Einsatz. Ihr könnt stolz darauf sein, die Befehle des Führers ausführen zu dürfen. Das ist kurz. Und voll ermitteln. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Heil Hitler. Faustgenossen, meine Damen und Herren, ich freue mich, Ihnen am heutigen Abend eine neue Mitarbeiterin und Bundesgenossen vorstellen zu dürfen, Fräulein Sally Maitland. I will now introduce Herr Karl-Heinz Schlettow. Freut mich sehr, meine Fräulein. Surely you are. It's queer cargo they're sending us these days. Fräulein Gretel Kühne. Unsere Organisation ist unseres Führers würdig. I thought you were too good to be true. And the means of my getting into your room. Our organization is very efficient. Frau Bremer. I am glad to see you complied so strictly with the blackout regulations. Well, the penalties were very severe. Herr von Kamnitz. Sehr geehrt, Gnädiges Fräulein. I hope you found the room 73 comfortable. I must say you've been looking after me. Yes, our organization. Very efficient. Thank you. All I can tell you, you've just gone into the chateau. They left the taxi around the corner and went in by the back way. I'll get going, sir. Where? To the chateau. Oh, I think you better wait here. She asked you to. Oh, yes. Yes, I, I suppose I'd better. Achtung! Rita! So, we are gathered here in this room for the last time. After many months of preparation, the hour has come. Tonight we strike. Herr Schlitter, Frau Kühne, Frau Bremer, Herr von Kramnitz will immediately return to your work. Within the next few hours, you may be called upon to lay down your lives for the Führer. If this is so, you will do it as readily as you have carried out your other duties. If you escape this calamity, you will get further instructions. That's all. Heil it. Heil it. Heil it. So, Fräulein Maitland, your attention. I'm all okay. I'm all attention. Good. Before I tell you your important part in the immense undertaking, I must first tell you that Jan, that is Kurt, is not my son and that we are neither of us Poles. For a member of the master race to have to make such a pretense even for the cause is most distasteful. I will take a glass of wine. Altogether six people have entered the house now. No one's left it yet. Thick fog coming up from the harbour. It gets much worse. It'll be difficult to keep the house under proper observation. It's a devil of a spot to leave her in. I do hope she's all right, sir. Ah, oh, she'll be all right. No, there's obviously a council meeting and she's in on it. It's the best thing that could have happened. Just what we all hoped for. She'll get a message through as soon as she can. Yes. She'll have a mouthful to tell us in the morning. Long before morning, everything will be over. Must have been a devastating blow to the Allies. Do you remember saying that on Citadel Hill? When Court told you about the Halifax explosion in the last war? Yes, I remember. You never spoke a truer word. Even as I am speaking, a great convoy is nearing its destination. Last night, under the cover of the fog, number four of the convoy, meant by Pip's columnists, was substituted for an identical ship meant by a German crew. Das bevorstehende Unternehmen ist von allergrößter Bedeutung für das Dritte Reich. Im Namen des Führers verleihe ich Ihnen deshalb für die ganze Besatzung das Eiserne Kreuz erster Klasse im Voraus. Sieg heil! Heil Hitler! On board are tons of TNT. The crew will abandon ship and a time fuse will do its work. The explosion of 1917 will be repeated tonight. The gateway to the Battle of the Atlantic will not only be closed, but shattered. How ingenious. How clever. Neither ingenious nor clever. Anyone could have thought of it. Most people would have thought it could not have been done. 
years of looking forward to the day and preparing for it. That's all. And what is my part to be? You are suspect with the British intelligence. We must have attention diverted to prevent a last-minute frustration. At the far end of Bedford Basin is the Queen Mary. She's due to sail tomorrow and full of troops. Now, you will get into touch with your friend Garrick. Tell him of a sabotage plot. We have already taken steps to see that this rumor has reached naval intelligence. Tell him that every available man is necessary to prevent the catastrophe. Right. He's at the Barrington. I'll... He's not at the Barrington. He left a few minutes after you and is now at British Naval Intelligence. Then I can go... No, my dear. You will not leave here. You will never leave us again. At the far end of the Narrows is a launch. At Sable Island is an U-boat. The launch will take us to the U-boat, the U-boat to Germany, a country to which we all belong. Our organization is very efficient. Yes, very. Well, you will I'll... telephone him. Yeah. Good. Even the elements are with us. Sammy. Thick like a blanket. Numbers Halifax 2421. A monitor is listening into all telephone conversations. Tell her you are on British intelligence staff and not to disconnect your call, although she can listen in. You think of everything. Of course. Now, there is a plot to blow up the Queen Mary. Within the next hour. Within the next hour. You must send every available man there to prevent it. Good, Fallen Maitland. You were born for the Secret Service. I hope so. Halifax. 2421. 2421. Two, you must not discuss shipping, troop movements, the weather, or any information likely to be of use to the enemy. But I have something very urgent to tell naval intelligence. Oh, listen in, but please don't cut me off under any circumstances. No, not that one. Hello, hello? Y yes? Sally. Listen, I'm at a wooden meeting, a council. Oh, but darling, you, you must believe me. You must. It's desperately urgent. The Queen Mary is sailing tomorrow. The Queen Mary? It is the Queen Mary. RTMP. Yes, 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 I know. But I'm not now. I can't go through with it. I'm terrified. You've got to act quickly. Tonight. Within an hour. Stop, 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 Stop. Forget everything I said about the Queen Mary. It's a blind. It's not the Queen Mary. It's a number four in the convoy due Halifax tonight. German ship full of TNT to be exploded in the Narrows. Admiral Dixon. Yes. Sally! I'm off to the shadows, sir. Dixon? Not a bit of this, Maria! Du infames Beast. Wir werden es dir schon zeigen. I told you I never trusted that girl, you dummer Junge. Don't ever let me get very suspicious. Hey, mental fool, get rid of her. I get rid of her. Drop that phone. Drop it! Hands up. You rotten cheat. Make me look a stupid fool. You've done more harm to our cause. You're wasting valuable time. Anything else you would like to say? Yes. But better be quick. Gosh, there's one humdinger of a row going on here. Hello. Is she dead? Of course, I made no mistake about that. Cut! Get up and get over there. Put your hands up. You too. Put them up. Hello. Hello. Monitor. Monitor, flash this line. Right. Urgent. This is Lieutenant Commander Garrick, Naval Intelligence. Verify headquarters. Message. Call RCMP. Not you, Mama, sit down. Tell RCMP, full steam ahead, Chateau Brochet. Brochet. Brochet? Yeah, I got it. You're holding Madame Orlock and the phony captain. Yes, yes, I got it. Send doctor, ambulance. If this message is understood, flash again. Right. Now, you sons of fritzes. This is Superintendent Davidson. Call all patrol cars and have them converge on the Chateau Brochet. All available men in the district to report to that point. Hunter here. 
Mega signal urgent. Number four in S convoy loaded TNT. Due for destruction on arrival. Number four in convoy loaded TNT. German crew about to destroy Halifax. How thick's the fog? Visibility zero, sir. Fog thickening. Number four is in the centre of the convoy. I'm going in to head her off. All available crew on board, signal every ship that passes and identify code numbers. Aye, aye, sir. That's her. Ahoy there! What's your number? Ahoy there! What's your number? Number four! Heave to! That's it, that's not Sind wir entdeckt? Na, dann geht's aber los! Number four! He too or I'll sink you! Sink us, and you'll sink the whole convoy! Make a signal for every ship to disperse, and meet at the final rendezvous at the door. Hi, Isaac. Sagen Sie dem ersten Offizier, höchste Geschwindigkeit, Vollkraft voraus! Make a signal, RCAF, ask for a bomber flight, to head for this position. Aye, aye, sir. Sparks, make a signal. RCAF, operations. Yes, yes, I got it. Ops room. Urgent message, sir, from Naval HQ. Send bomber flight latitude. Visibility, 10 yards, sir. No sign of number four. Any sign of us, sir? No, what do the instruments say, number one? Within 500 yards to starboard, sir, on a course west by northwest. It's the last resort to a rammer. She's too far out to do much damage, and the convoy's well out of close range by now. Reports number four visible above low boxer, about 600 yards to our stop. Make a signal. Squadron leader. What does he say? Never mind us. Go in and finish her off. Right. Full speed ahead, south by southwest. All hands stand by in life belts. All rafts at the ready. We should sit down, my dear. No, no, no need to fuss around like that. Much better get on with breakfast. The breakfast isn't in yet. Well, there's the coffee. Oh, so it is. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Coffee, my dear? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, please. Let me see. Is it one sacri or two? One, please. When I think of that last day she was here for breakfast, that yellow canary, the things you said to her, Betty. You were just as bad, not her. Was I? <laughs> I suppose I was. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Why was I such a blind fool? It's all right, dear. You couldn't help it. If she'd only given us a hint. Well, Mother, she was in the Secret Service. Then why didn't she wear a uniform? <laughs> Front door. Now, steady, steady, sit down. Nothing, nothing gained by, by getting excited. Keep calm. All right, dear, all right. Hello, Hargraves. What are you doing here? 
Oh, sorry, it sounds inhospitable, but... We were expecting... Yes, I know. Well, she's done her last job for the Secret Service. You must be prepared for a shock. She's a very different Sally from the girl who left here a few months ago. Sally! Oh, darling! Mother. Oh, how lovely to see you. Betty! Dad, how are you? All the better for seeing you, my dear. But what's all this tin sailor business, eh? Oh, I've been green with envy ever since the first time I saw Betty and hers. My God, that's fine. That's splendid. That's, that's pretty good. <laughs> oh, the rotten things I said to you. I should have known. I was more scared about fooling you than all the others put together. But, but what the devil are you doing, sir? Kissing my mother-in-law, sir. Who are you? Your son-in-law, sir. Nonsense. We haven't got one. Who is this man? My husband. Your husband? God bless my soul. Dear, did I suppose you'll stay to breakfast? Thank you. And you, Charles? Well, I haven't married her, but I'm ravenous. <laughs> Late this morning, Miss Sally. Oh, Reynolds. Reynolds, we should want two more places. Miss Sally and her husband. Mr... Uh, uh, Garrick. Yes. Have a cigarette while you're waiting. Thanks, I will. Will you... Uh... No, thank you. I must be dreaming. I thought I saw a swastika. You did? That saved Sally's life. How? Oh, not now, Mother. It's far too long a story. Let me see. Macy? Of course. Did you know about this, Charles? About him? No, no, no. About Sally and the swastika. Oh, yes. Well, the Colonel knows all about it. As a matter of fact, he invented Sally from Unted and Linden. Oh, Charles, how could you? Sorry. It had to be done. However, it's all over now. The Sally Maitland myth has been exploded. But there's one thing you don't know. Not even you, Colonel. Something that even justified deceiving all of you. I actually heard Rivendroff tell the Fuhrer that the British were decadent and wouldn't fight. You think I was going to stand that? Not bloody likely. <laughs> <laughs> How to prosper.